So the, the next uh, interview uh, is going to be uh, an interview of uh, the CEO of PP Live, Vincent Tao. And uh, this interview is going to be led by uh, Gaddy Epstein, who's the bureau chief of Forbes magazine. Gaddy, where is Gaddy? Okay, great. So, um, please, uh, gentlemen. Vincent, great to see you. Great to see you again. Yes. Yes, nice meeting you and the audience as well. Morning. Good morning. Uh, so you, uh, you spoke here last year, and I think the, the online video slash TV landscape has changed pretty dramatically in that one year. So we've yeah, had... there's a lot of people with IPO. Was, uh, IPOs. a lot of eyeballs, and uh, yeah. And, and you, uh, and not, last but not least, you've raised uh, $250 million from SoftBank this year? That's right, yeah. And, uh, uh, so... Can you explain how you are going to, and this is a very populated, heavily funded marketplace. Another competitor, majorly funded competitor, GE, mm -hmm. came in as well. Uh, how, uh, I mean, how does it look in terms of your, let's start with how are you doing competitively in terms of revenue, uh, you know, expenses. You know, Yoku is uh, not close to profitability yet. None of the, neither, neither is Tudo, and Tudo is having troubles with its IPO. How are you comparing? Uh, good questions, and uh, uh, of course, uh, we actually raised the uh, the 250 million. Um, closing actually was about January 7th, and we announced it in the uh, in the uh, February 3rd, which is actually right Chinese New Year. This is Chinese New Year's Eve, we announced it. Uh, so now you can tell it's actually quite interesting when we do the fundraising. Uh, we did not compare it to the Yuku at the time because Yuku IPO is December 8th. And we closed our run at the January 7th. So a lot of people say, oh, because you take advantage of Yuku. I have to say publicly, actually, it's not because we're already closing our term. Otherwise, if we know, if we knew the Yuku's valuation is higher, we probably can do more, right? But anyway, and that's really good funding. And the $250 million, I believe, is the largest single run in terms of uh, in the video industry, not just China and also globally. Uh, well, company's not public yet, of course, with uh, this uh, sizable funding. And we definitely want to prepare ourselves well. Uh, in order to capture uh, the IPO wave. But uh, I, I personally believe you have to get a very solid uh, business model before you rush into the IPO. And uh, I did speak to very uh, frankly to the public. I believe the video industry is not actually ready yet. Uh, primarily because this, this business model still needs, it still needs time to develop the business models. Not just because of you, uh, you know, China and also worldwide if you look at the video industry. And uh, it is actually very challenging to make a very a sizable a profit uh, from the, uh, the current the, the business that we're doing. Just basically most of the video company style advertising driven. Uh, just looking at the Hulu, of course, I know there's a lot of people want to say, hey, I wear the Hulu. We, we try to you know, compare this with the Hulu, use the Hulu as a benchmark. But if you talk to our Hulu friends, of course, they're, I, I, I visit them very often. They're, many of them are my great friends. They're ex-Microsoft employees. Uh, Hulu's margin is less than 10%. And Hulu is profitable, but they did not get to the IPO because the bankers look at or investors look at the Hulu model. They say, hey, you got a very large penetration in the United States already. You got incredible revenue growth already, but your margin is so low. How are you going to sustain your business? And the margin is actually less than 10%. They will not get a really good uh, you know, valuation from the uh, investment the, the viewpoint. So that's why Hulu start to postpone the IPO and also they're doing the fee-based model. They think whether they can uh, generate additional revenue from uh, uh, this is called Hulu Plus. Basically it's a subscription based model. But unfortunately it's not very successful at the moment. So that's sort of challenge to the Hulu model. Uh, so I think if a company try to relate them to the Hulu, got to be careful because it's not actually a really good model to, uh, to compare. Then back to the Netflix, and in China, there's no real Netflix uh, company. And I know a lot of companies say, where are the Netflix? Uh, somebody says they are Netflix, but we don't think there's actually a real Netflix company in China. So anyone who's saying that can be also got to be cautious as well. 
Now back to the question about what PP Live is doing, and uh, there's some numbers people uh, sort of needs to be uh, aware of in terms of PP Live. Compared to many of the video companies, majority of them either they start from the VOD services or they start from UGC, right? Like a Yuku to the, they're based on UGC side, then start to invest a lot on professional contents. And the Sohu Chi has been doing a lot of professional content, sort of like a VOD size. And uh, we're unique in a sense that we claim we're the largest TV at a TV networks. And because we aggregate all the major Chinese TV broadcasters, TV stations, I would say, like over 100 TV stations. So you can come to PP Live and watch all those live programs. Uh, either uh, you know 24/7 and of course a VOD. So we basically manage those premium contents primarily from TV stations. Then we start to add a lot of programs produced by a lot of TV professional uh, the studio houses because they used to produce a lot of TV shows. But a TV show, you know, the time is limited. They can you know the full company produce one hour a week for that uh, you know one TV station. Now they had a chance, they use a platform to produce a lot of TV shows on our side. So if you're looking at PP Life and by internal accounting, we have almost like 20,000 channels. 20,000 channels. So it's TV network, that sort of thing, sort of thing, yeah. And, and what is your, well let's, before I ask you more about revenue, which I do want to get into, let's go back for a second. Your installed user base is how big right now? Uh, install base is about 200 million. Active user per month is about 100 million, over 100 million. And how do you count active users? That's uh, uh, three times. If they uh, in a month, they can use your system for a service for three times. Yeah. And most of those uses are for an extended period of time to watch a show, or I mean, to watch something that's 30 minutes an hour. Yeah, this is a number that uh, our, our average viewing time per person per day on our platform is over two hours, 30 minutes. It's over two hours, 30 minutes, right. average. So this is a no comparable for any other websites right now or web properties that I heard of uh, in China and uh, much larger than any other UGC or other or even SNS networks. All right, and uh, let's, let's look at the cost of that for a second. One of the, you could say it's a disadvantage for your model is that you have to install this software. The advantage is you don't have ban the kind of bandwidth costs that the Yoku and Tudos face, correct? Is that, how, how big an advantage do you have in that? Uh, yeah, the PP Live, of course, this is the core of the company, is actually this, uh, we call the video uh, cloud system. And uh, our system called the PP Cloud. We have 50 patents around this one. Uh, it's a, uh, first one I need to correct that is not uh, like a pure P2P system. It's not a pure P2P. It's really a hybrid system. We call it grid computing. Basically, we have, uh, in China, we already have 110 sort of a data pops. Uh, basically, you purchase rack servers in the data centers, sort of 110 across China, and actually international. USA, Singapore, Europe, we have our data hubs, basically. So we form a very huge network, plus a lot of uh, local computers. For example, your PCs, once you install our software, you become one of a node of our grid. So each computing device is, uh, is treated as a computing node. So we're basically managing this huge of computing nodes and they're either from data center, our own servers, or super nodes or, or personal nodes. So it's a, it's a hybrid system in a way that we manage all the video traffic through this node network. It's a little bit similar to the Skype concept. Actually Skype did that, it's the exact same. And even you remember, Back two years ago, Nick Nurse, those two founders of Skype, they founded a company called Juiced. Right. Right. Juiced wanted to do very similar things, but unfortunately they failed. But actually, uh, in terms of computing architecture, the principle is very same. And what is, doing. what is the benefit, can you, can you quantify, compared to a Pure, let's yeah. say an unnamed market leader yeah. um, in terms of bandwidth? Uh, in terms of per stream cost, we just do app to app comparison, our saving is 85% above. So basically your cost is looking at, uh, it's basically there, it's 15% of theirs. And on the other hand, some other costs aren't really uh, differentiated. You're, you have to pay for content. That's a competitive marketplace where prices are, cost is going up. Yeah. You have, there's a cost of advertising. Uh, that has continued to be tough, right? So how are you, I mean, 
you could potentially be with 85% savings in bandwidth costs. Yeah, you could that's... potentially be operating cash flow positive right now, um, possibly. Are you? Uh, how close are you to profitability? I don't get to keep asking me about this uh, uh, tough questions. But back to that, I'll add one more thing about this PP cloud system. And uh, this is another uh, advantage. It's two competitive advantage. Is because of system, we could accommodate huge traffic concurrently. That's why we can support a life. If you're looking at a worldwide, there's a few, you know, sort of video companies supporting live streaming and supporting a huge concurrent users and simultaneously. Okay, I'll trade you an easy question for a hard one. First, the easy one. Uh, what was your most popular event in the last year that you... Uh, last year uh, was a World Cup. How many, okay. how many viewers did you have for one, for one match? Uh, concurrent user is over... Uh, like at the peak time is actually over 8 million. 8 million concurrent users. Concurrent users. I'll give you one number, then you know what you mean about those eight minutes. If, let, let's say if one million user online concurrently watching like a live show, uh, if you me, uh, your bandwidth is one megabyte, your demand of your bandwidth at that point is one terabyte. That point is one terabyte. It's like going to highway, right? You need the bandwidth. And what is terabyte, one terabyte means? Uh, USA and China, the two continents, Right, the biggest pipe, the optical fiber between the two continents is actually one terabyte. So basically that big highway would not be able to accommodate the huge traffic at the same time. So that's why in the US we have not been able to actually being able to offer the concurrent users more than three minutes mm -hmm. because the last, the record, that's what Microsoft did, was Obama uh, inauguration speech. Microsoft bought all the US bandwidth to use a silver light for video streaming. And at the peak time is three minutes, then the network crashed, basically it's black screen. So because the bandwidth is just not enough, the highway is just not enough to support those traffic coming at the same time. This is the interesting of the video because video has this what we call the rush hour or peak hour issue. It's seven o'clock, everybody go rush into the uh, network. So at that point, how you be able to manage that traffic? That is actually when we manage the life, we experience that. That is the advantage, core advantage. That's also the reason many companies are not doing live, they just do VOD, because VOD is fine, people can, don't have to go to the, uh, the same, same uh, route at the same time. All right, so let's go back to the, to the hard question. Revenue, advertising, I take it, is, is obviously the mainstream. How is that looking, has it grown? Uh, what kind of numbers are you looking at? Yeah, before, this is also one of the reasons we get this uh, um, sizable investment. Before we get to the, uh, this investment, we're almost about to break even. Uh, actually, months are sort of uh, a quarter to break even already and up, up on the way to become profit, bit, uh, profitable because, of course, we'll have a savings on the bandwidth side. And now having this investment, uh, frankly, and uh, you know, with this investment, we have to do very aggressively in terms of market share, in terms of branding, uh, in terms of infrastructure investment. So we're not prepared ourselves to be profitable in short term. Rather, we would like to invest uh, much more heavily in the, uh, in the, in the audience base and the, and, and the infrastructure. One could ask if you even have enough money in the bank. If Yoku uh, has, with an IPO and secondary raise, they're, they're around 600 million in the bank, uh, maybe more. Um, so do you feel like you, you have enough in your arsenal to compete? Um, I think the Yoku's burning, the burning ratio is way much higher than us. And I think that's a smart move for them to raise the capital at this point of time. And in order to keep, uh, keep the, uh, you know, their com uh, competitiveness with their own competitors, some of the other UGC, uh, some other UG side. But our model is a bit different. We think we're uh, very distinctive from the UQ's model, which is more UGC, VOD stuff, or like a TV network is completely different. Also, the way we're managing our service is also different. For example, this year, you're probably going to show, this is going to be very exciting. Uh, we uh, co-invest with Hunan TV, which, of course, you heard is a large China TV show. The China largest TV show is called Supergirl. Right. And this time, we're jointly working with the Hunan TV, and we're going to do this to pursue a Supergirl show. Uh, is actually make it as a reality show. 63 days, 24 hours. And we put all the Supergirls in a happy castle. Uh, we put the, in, in a castle there. And we put 50 cameras, 24 hours streaming, 
You can watch it from your iPad, mobile, PC, anytime. Your fans are gonna follow because they're watching what they're gonna do tonight. Because every night they go to Hunan TV to do competition. But the rest of the time, actually you'll be able to track them all the time. So this is probably gonna not just ch large in China, it's gonna be large in the worldwide. And that's to build, not to build advertising revenue as much as market share, brand, um, uh, et cetera. Actually, for this show, uh, there's a key sponsor. This is the largest in terms of a GRP rating. It's the largest period. And it's going to be largest in the online as well. So definitely that's going to help us to make a lot of uh, uh, advertising dollars through the sponsorship. Well, I guess we know how you're spending your $250 million then. Um, and I think uh, I'll just uh, I'll wrap up with, um, with a final question. So you've said you're not, the market's not ready. Um, for online video. There's a lot of money in it. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on companies to IPO. Um, yeah, SoftBank is known the money to be reason. a long-term strategic investor, so right. perhaps you don't have as much pressure as some. What is your estimated, when are we going to see a, a PP Live IPO in terms of one year, two years, less than that? Um, you never know, and, uh, uh, but we'll prepare ourselves well for the IPO path. And, uh, but of course, the uh, investor like SoftBank is a really long-term strategic investor. They're not just looking for exit for the IPO. So we, uh, we basically need to just make efforts at now to make our platform as global as possible. And uh, there's another number I can share with others that just recently I got a report from Sanven, which is a network of traffic report. Uh, by the way, this is not corresponding to the actual user base, but corresponding to the actual traffic on the internet. And you know that Netflix already about 25% of traffic, in terms of traffic of, of the US uh, network. And PP Live right now is ranked the number four in Asia Pacific, ranked the number five in Europe, and ranked the number eight in Latin America. Who's ranked above uh, in, in Asia? Uh, PP this is, up by this is internet traffic. Yeah, this is ranked by protocols. By The number one is the HTTP. Uh, HTTP, of course, website. Right. The number two is uh, either is actually YouTube or BitTorrent or um, some others. And another one is called the Flash Videos. Flash Video, of course, aggregated with many other different video companies. And uh, then next is PP Live. Well, I guess we'll be hearing more about PP Live. Um, uh, good luck in the next year. We'll see, what, we'll see where you are a year from now. Yeah, surely. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.